Good morning, folks. Welcome back. Um, today, we are on a 4,700 square foot polishing project in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. You can see the equipment I have behind us here. Uh, this is going to be a convenience store. So let me flip this around. I'll show you the, the concrete that we have. We're going to be grinding this to a 1,500 grit polish. It's cold up here. It's in the low 30s. Uh, we're just above freezing and uh, there's no heat in the building, so it's not very comfortable, but we're going to get this done. Okay, this is what we have. Uh, again, 4,700 square feet. First thing we need to do is all these joints are filled with dust. Uh, we're going to saw cut all the joints open. We're going to use our US saw right here. And uh, we're going to cut them open and then fill them with a polyurea joint filler. There's our vacuum system that we always use. Our generator is right outside that window there. We have our grinders in here. We also have our new grinder, the uh, Workmaster, um, which we're gonna be using for the edges, which we're excited about. So we're gonna get going. All right, this is what they call an upcut saw, and the saw blade cuts in a forward position so it throws the dust up into the shroud to clean the joint out. Now, when I run this saw down, the blade is only an eighth of an inch and the actual um, saw cut is approximately a quarter inch. So what I always do is I take the whole saw and I angle it slightly so the front left edge of the blade touches the left side and the back right edge of the blade touches the right side. Um, it, it's a little awkward to do, but when you're used to the saw, it works really good. That way you can run down one time, clean out the whole joint, and it's open and prepped. If there's any areas that are broken out or whatever on the edge there, we'll just take a wire brush and clean up the best we can, uh, just because it's an awkward shaped joint. Okay, so we cut all the joints open to clean out any dust and debris in there. Of course, you hear a grinder in the background here. So now we're gonna fill the joints. So I use a gun. This is a DCE 591. This is a DeWalt 20 volt dual cartridge uh, applicator gun. So I'm just gonna show you what I do here with this. This, this tool saves us a lot of time and uh, wrist pain from pumping a gun. So you put your dual cartridge tube in here. I always push down and, and watch the tip right here. If I push down, it purges the air out of the top. Very important so you stay on ratio. And then what I always do, I'll pump a little bit into a bag here. And then once it's mixed properly, I just come over, I get right in the joint, and you overfill these joints. As long as it's overfilled, you're good. Now, I always like to sit on a roller chair also so I can do this quickly. And normally I'll have one person feed me two, and I'll just run around and fill joints. If it goes low like that, I just come back, I hit it again. We're grinding this whole thing. So I continue filling the joints, and you'll see on the right side of the frame, um, Jared and Jeff are going to take sand and pre-fill the joints. If you don't pre-fill the joint, the material is just going to run right out the bottom as you fill it. All right, guys, we're going to show you a little bit of what we do to fill these joints with some sand prior to getting the joint filler uh, in them. And uh, with these joints, they're fairly deep and we don't want the material to run out. So Jared is going ahead and working with some coarse sand and uh, filling it in and then scraping it low. We want to get about uh, and half an inch or so uh, down so that there's enough room for the material to adhere 
well inside the joint, but not run down through the joint. So uh, that's what he's doing here. And we're getting a good fill of sand prior to us going ahead and uh, filling it with the uh, joint filler. Okay, so now all these joints are full and now we're shaving off this material, which of course Jeff is in the tough spot right here, but it's very cold too. It's like 35 degrees in here. So that's what we get when you shave the joint. And then when we grind over it, obviously you're gonna have this real nice smooth joint. So we're gonna run around, we're gonna shave all these joints. We're gonna get ready to start grinding probably right after lunch. All right, so we continue shaving the joints and now uh, we're getting our grinder set up. You can see in the distance there, we're getting the one 800 set up. Uh, we're gonna get the other one set up also. It's very important that you orchestrate how you're going to move around the room when you have multiple grinders because you're gonna get tangled with all the hoses. So at this point, we have um, our two 32-inch 800 uh, HTC grinders and the Workmaster grinder that we have to get out on the floor. So Jeff is starting in the front there, and that concrete, ironically enough, is extremely hard, and his diamonds glaze over virtually immediately. On the right-hand side, Jared has the other grinder, and that concrete is actually fairly soft. So we run into two separate types of concrete on the same floor, which is very common, believe it or not. So I was talking about orchestrating movement. So what we'll normally do is you have your two grinders and you work in the center and work away from each other. That way you're not running into each other um, on the floor. Otherwise, every pass, you're simply bumping into each other. Okay, folks, so you saw yesterday what we did on time-lapse. I'm just going to show exactly what was done yesterday and what we're going to do today. I'll flip this around and show you. Okay, so yesterday we ground the entire floor with the 40 grit diamond. We edged everything with the uh, Workmaster uh, grinder. And uh, now we're just getting started with the 80 grit metals. We got two passes on here yesterday. You can see the dust difference. This is the 40 grit here. This is the 80 grit. And those are not scratches. That's just a, like a dust pattern on top. Um, but it's very important that we get the scratches out. Like there you can see some scratches from the 40 grit yet, which we're going to get out on the next pass. So we're just trying to dial this in. So Jeff is set up with his grinder here. We're going to get Jared set up on this grinder over here. And on this job, we are using the... Uh, yellow diamonds for extremely hard concrete. So this is what we used yesterday, the 40 grit yellows. We're going to switch them to 80s. I'm sorry, that is the 80s on there now, so we're already set for today. Um, so we're going to grind this out. We're going to get out of the metals today, and we're going to get the densifier down uh, today. So I'll set this up on time lapse so you can watch us grind. So this is on time lapse, and I'm running fast speed on this and it's a very painfully slow grind to get these scratches out of here. I did want to show this at real time just so you can see how slow the actual grinding process can be. Um, this is regular speed and you can tell we are simply barely moving with the grinder. So often I will follow behind a grinder um, and check the scratch pattern. It's very important that you check for scratches because if you leave a scratch from the 40 grit diamond after you run the 80s, you're probably not gonna get that scratch out. So it's very important that you keep randomly checking to look at the scratch pattern and you can see the scratches in there now. That's before the grinder and then obviously after the grinder, you wanna make sure those aren't there anymore. All right, while the guys are inside running the 80 grit diamonds, I have to fix our shot blaster for the next job coming up in two weeks. Uh, we have a Thanksgiving break, and then after that, we're going back to another one. So I'm going to show you what I have to do. I have to change these electronic reversing contacts or contactors in our shot blaster, which I've never done before. It could be a little bit hairy, so I'm going to put this on video, and hopefully you don't watch anything short out on me. All right, so this is the inside of the shot blaster. This is... Um, the reversing contactors that I need to change out. Of course, I can't find these parts right now, so I found them on eBay, 
So I want to bring them in here, match them up, make sure they're going to work first. So I start removing one wire at a time and placing that wire on the new contactor to make sure they're all in the same location. You surely don't want to put the wrong wire at the wrong spot or it could be catastrophic when you hit power to this thing. So I take my time, remove one wire, one contactor, replace them all very slowly, check, double check, make sure everything's good. I took lots of pictures before and after also to make sure all the wires are going to the correct spots. All right, so there we have it. Hopefully I did that correctly. I checked and double checked all the wires, all the breakers are on. So the next thing I need to do is throw 480 to this and make sure this panel right here says 480. Before I was getting a zero reading, um, which hopefully will solve that problem. Okay, I couldn't necessarily video the whole thing there. So we hit power, it still didn't work, but what I did figure out is these reversing contactors and you have to be very careful. There's no power to this unit, it's totally unplugged. But what I need to do is manually hold this over. So I'm literally gonna have to jam something in here and then the shot blaster works. So there's something not working right. I, I can't figure it out. I don't have time to uh, get tech service in here. We have a job coming up real soon and uh, at least I got it to run. So that's what we have to do out in the field is just make this stuff work. So back inside the building again. So Jared is on the right with his grinder. His is grinding pretty well. Jeff is in this really hard concrete and his diamonds are glazing over. So at this point we decide to put some water in the grinder uh, on the left to cool down the diamonds um, to open them up again. And I just poured water in now and now we're going to start grinding and I'll show you what we do in a couple of seconds here to open up these diamonds. So this is uh, Jared's grinder that he's running, and, and if you look at the dust trail behind it, it's very hard to see, there is a dust trail. You want to make sure you're leaving dust. If you're not leaving dust, you're not grinding. Now Jeff's grinder over here, there is zero dust at all, so his diamonds are pretty much glazed over. We just put the water in, and now I'm going to put some fine sand in front of the grinder. And this seems to be the trick that we've figured out. So you put the fine sand down, and then it's also important that you spray a little bit of water on top of that fine sand if you have it um, to kind of hold it in place when the diamonds hit it. And then uh, as the diamonds come over the sand, it will start to open them up and it's going to cut more aggressively. Now this will normally take a couple hundred square feet of grinding before the diamonds open and you actually see a difference. But pretty shortly here, you're going to see Jeff speed up his pace quite a bit once the diamonds open. So I know this is time lapse here, but you can see Jeff, all of a sudden he starts picking up the pace and now he's not slowing down at all on the left. I mean, he's actually going pretty quickly and makes pretty fast work of the rest of the 80 grit diamonds. So we finish up the bathrooms in the back there. Now we switch to the 150 grit metals and now we're going perpendicular from the last pass. And you can see how we worked from the center there and then worked our way away from each other so you're not stepping on each other and then uh, after we get done with the 150s we're going to apply the densifier and that i put in a bucket with a uh, like a sump pump in the bucket and i spray it out real heavy and then we use a four foot wide broom and push the puddle around us so we have even coverage all over the whole floor and this is where we're going to end our day so it dries overnight. And today's day number three, we're now at the 100 grit resin bond stage. So both grinders are now set up with the 100 grit puck. We go from the 150 grit metal to the 100 grit resin bond puck. Jeff runs his on the left, Jared's running through the bathrooms and the kitchen and stuff on the back. And we get the floor wiped out with the 100s. Okay, so I wanted to show you what these look like now. This is Jeff's grinder. He already has the 200 grit puck on his grinder, but these are just held on with Velcro. And there's like a little edge here, so they can't really rip off. Um, as long as you're on smooth concrete, you're not gonna have an issue. You just put them on like that, and the down pressure of the grinder, this weighs, what, 900 pounds and change. The down pressure of the grinder holds those on. So this is our 200 grit. This is what we're gonna do next. 
Um, not much to see here, but that's the surface of the floor. Real, real minor scratches that should come out with this next pass. And that's what we got. Okay, so we start running the 200 grit resin bond puck. And what you're going to see, I know it's hard on, on the time lapse, but you're going to see us checking the floor an awful lot. We realize we still have scratches in the floor, and this is where it's very important to look very closely as you're going. So right there, Jeff just switched to the ceramic 3-inch pucks. So those are more aggressive. So those took these little scratches out that we were not able to get out with the resin bonds. So now Jeff finishes the rest of the floor with the 200 grit ceramics and then he actually has to go back over the rest of the floor again it's a lot easier to do it now than finish and realize you have micro scratches all over the floor so that's why we're only using one grinder at this point because we only have one set of those 200 and 400 ceramics all right, folks, I wanted you guys to see like what happens here when you go from 400 to 800. And we've been on this floor for days now, and it really doesn't look that much different, I'm sure, to the camera. You might be able to see a little bit of reflection here in the floor, but this is the 400 grit in the camera view now. We just got done running the 800. And look at that reflection down there, that's crazy. And we're only at eight, eight, yeah, 800, we're gonna go to 1500. So um, Jeff's going to run the 800 pads over the rest of the floor. I'm doing the edging in front of me, I'm set up there. We're gonna get all this wiped out yet today. And then tomorrow we're gonna run a cleanup pad, guard and burnish. So Jeff continues running the 800 pads and now it rains and the roof begins to leak. So they have to come in and fix that quick. Well, we came in today and we're supposed to put the guard down and burnish. Um, first thing we need to do is run a cleanup pad over this floor to get this film of dust off. There's just a real thin film. So we have the grinder loaded up with that, but we can't have water on the floor. And now we have water in multiple areas. So you could tell running this cleanup pad how much uh, remaining dust you get off the floor. It really does a great job at cleaning everything up. So we run the cleanup pads over the whole floor and we're kind of working around the water. It's slowly drying out as we go here. And then we're going to apply the guard at 2,000 square foot per gallon immediately after we're done with the cleanup pads. So we're gonna mop our guard on here and then burnish what we can because uh, we have water and stuff all over the floor. So when you put the guard down, this goes down extremely thin. I know I mentioned before, but 2,000 square foot per gallon. So normally what we do is we run around the whole edge and then we put the film down. And this stuff dries like in two minutes behind you. It dries incredibly fast. You can see it as we do it. It goes from wet to a, a haze virtually instantly. Uh, so we run the guard over the whole floor let it dry and then we get our burnisher ready and we're just going to burnish the whole floor. We try to open the doors. You get a slight dust haze in the air when you burnish it. So I start burnishing in those back rooms. I, I like to get the back rooms knocked out first because they're the most time consuming. And then we do the edge and then we start doing the body of the floor. You can see the slight haze in the air, but look at the gloss that you get behind that burnisher. It really looked like glass when we were done. All right, folks, so we just got done. Now this is 1500 grit final polish behind me here. All right, so you can definitely see the high shine. I mean, this really, really popped well. Now there's dust on the floor yet from the burnisher um, and they still have to hang dry while there's gonna be dirt on this floor a hundred times until they're done. So uh, nobody's concerned about the dust. But when you start using that, you won't have any of those marks. It's just going to be a real high shine floor. And that's what we have. So we have a week off for Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving to everybody who's watching. Uh, if you like what you're watching, please subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.